D-Day has come. Early this morning, the Allies began the assault on the northwestern face of Hitler's European fortress. In the coming week, the BBC remembers the day that signaled the return of liberty to Western Europe. We remember the men who went, but did not come home, and the men who did return, but will never forget. Tanks and that were coming in, they were running over dead bodies and some of the wounded maybe, you know, that um, they just couldn't help themselves, you know, they were coming in too quick, they never got a, the beach parties never got a chance to, to remove them proper, you know. In spellbinding documentaries on Sunday and Monday night, Charles Wheeler, a D-Day veteran himself, tells of how the events of June the 6th, 1944, turned the tide of war and how the landings themselves heralded the conflict where men bled and died in the sand at the battle for Normandy. In training, this was how the landing was expected to go. As the landing craft touches the shore, down goes the door, and out hurtle the troops, led by the platoon commander. His job is to get as far up the beach as he can before he's hit or treads on a mine, and to carry his men with him. I was very hesitant to get off that boat, because it was, it, I mean, it was murder. Down he went and totally disappeared. So I thought, oh God, it, it, it isn't the beach, it's a sandbank, and he's gone into deep water. And there were people in about 30 yards away, in the hotels and houses, shooting at us with machine guns. The first man I've seen dead, I looked at him and I thought, well, why is he sleeping? Because I was so naive about death. We ran up the beach. And all the time, the noise that was terrific, the bodies of Canadian soldiers were heaped up at the side of the water. I looked at this chap, he had a big ginger moustache, I could see him today now, and I just thought he was sleeping. And then I realized, looking at the back of his head, all his brains was on the sand. The first thing I saw was a dead Canadian soldier lying face down in the ocean, being drifted by the surf. I could feel something lumbering behind, and I turned round, and there was a flail tank, and I couldn't get away from it. It seemed to be getting there, and I thought, in no way am I going to be a baker line after travelling all this way. Eyewitness memories from the soldiers carrying responsibility for their own lives and for the lives of their men. Did you consider aborting the operation and saying, I can't do it? Yes, for about five seconds. Uh, and I realized I was being a bloody fool. There was no option but to go on. Each assault party was about a third only of their original strength. And they went straight to the batteries, went straight in, and attacked the crews. They were firing from the hip from the moment they went through the wire until the moment they reached the inside of the casement so that they were dealing with anybody who happened to be in the way. The whole operation um, was really fantastic, you know. I wouldn't have, maybe I didn't want to be there, but I wouldn't have missed it for the world, if you understand what I mean, you know. It's, it was really something to see. From Sunday night, a week of bulletins from News 44, Sue Lawley presents the D-Day news as it unfolded to a nation that held its breath. Good evening. The headlines tonight, the 5th of June. The city of Rome is celebrating its liberation. Allied forces are in full control of the Italian capital following its fall yesterday. British and American bombers are tonight mounting heavy raids on the French coast near Calais. German radio is saying that an invasion is on the way. Princess Elizabeth has made her first public speech. I should like to assure you that my own interest and my own service will always be given most wholeheartedly. And Gone with the Wind, the film has closed in London after a record-breaking four years and two months. And on D-Day morning, BBC Breakfast News will be on the air live from Aramarsh in Normandy with context and expert analysis of modern history's most ambitious military campaign. On this beach, British soldiers landed to begin the liberation of Europe. I'm Julian Thompson, and I commanded the 3rd Commander Brigade Royal Marines in the most recent British amphibious operation to liberate the Falkland Islands. 
I shall be reporting for BBC Breakfast News on the 50th anniversary of a far greater operation as seen through the eyes of the men who were there. I don't think I was really frightened. I don't think anybody was really frightened. Uh, we were more or less frightened for the Jerry's on the other side because they were getting a hell of a lot more than what we were getting. On Thursday night on BBC Two, a unique colour footage diary of the push to Berlin. Among the thousands of Allied troops crossing the Channel that morning was a Hollywood director called George Stevens. Stevens was aboard HMS Belfast, in charge of the newsreel team recording the event for the American Army. It was this superb access which enabled Stevens to shoot what must rank as one of the most evocative home movies in history. It is upsetting, you know, they, you can believe it or believe it not, but there are tears when we go around them cemeteries in Normandy to see the graves of, of, of the lads that you was with, you know, you was actually with. BBC drama for D-Day week finds Alec Guinness with Leo McKern and Lauren Bacall on a moving and amusing pilgrimage to the grave of a wartime friend, a foreign field. I can see them lads. I, I can see Charlie Ava and uh, <clears throat> Larry Crawford, Billy Craig. I, I can see all them fellas. I, I know them and I still know them, you know. And lest we should ever forget, D-Day weekend is marked by a series of live services from the ports of Britain to the graves of Normandy. And on the waters between, D-Day veterans and heads of state come together in pride and sorrow to celebrate the freeing of people and to mourn the loss of their countrymen 50 years ago. It won't be a 60th, I don't think, to you. 70th. I hope there's an 100th and I'll be there like. <laughs> D-Day Remembered on BBC Television.